So this is a photograph of my office door at Kirk Hall at the University of Saskatchewan. The quote is the title of a 1992 commentary by Jonas Salk, the scientist who discovered the vaccine for polio. So each time I come to the office, this quotation gives me a two second pause before I insert my keys to the door to start my day. <sighs> two second pause. But frankly, it's done more than that. The quotation's given me pause to reflect on what I, as an academic, might leave for those who will follow. And I don't mean the papers, the presentations, or even the TEDx talks. Rather, I was thinking, how can I be a good academic ancestor? How can I leave the academy and our graduates more ready to tackle critical global challenges? I call myself a sustainability scholar. I conduct research, teach graduate students, and plan graduate programs in environment and sustainability. And from this vantage point, I see a growing list of global challenges, new education needs for students and researchers, and an opportunity to make change. So let's explore. So when I was a student, the Midnight doomsday clock loomed large. Fears about the sustainability of people and the planet revolved around the nuclear arms race, population growth, pollution and pesticides, and persistent inequalities. And in the last 40 years, the number of academics, articles, and even journals dedicated to sustainability has exploded. And yet, despite all the knowledge we've gained, we've really just added to this list of concerns, with key challenges today being climate change and the loss of biological and cultural diversity. The countdown clock is even closer to midnight than when I was a student. And the biggest threats, however, to the sustainability of people and the planet are not environmental. They're profoundly social. Nature isn't gonna kill us. We're doing a fine enough job of that ourselves. But the drivers of unsustainability are the decisions that we make, the people, the processes, and the institutions that we create. These drivers lead to disruptions and devastation in our environments, our economies, and our societies. We need effective change makers if we hope for a sustainable future. And yet, universities are failing to equip graduates to become the very change makers we need. A few years ago, a PhD student in one of my graduate seminars was facing a dilemma. Their approach to understanding long-term water availability involved examining the interconnections between human and environmental drivers at a regional scale and involving people from government industry, and communities in the work. And yet they were constantly being told by their advisors to stick to the science, leave the people aside for the moment, go deep, go narrow, solve the world's problems after the PhD. This, this was the path to success. This was the path to academic success, but it's not the path to a sustainable future. Today, we have more knowledge than we know how to apply. Jonas Salk told us that over 30 years ago. The student was on the right track. Environmental science alone is not sufficient to address the sustainability challenges we face. If academia is gonna become part of the solution, we need to think about science in a new way. Scientists of sustainability must contribute in a meaningful way to rebuilding relationships, relationships with nature and relationships with one another. Scientists also need to become more effective advocates for change. And to do this, academic scientists must model how to collectively produce knowledge with people who live, work, and breathe outside of our disciplines and also outside of academia. This means we have to develop research methods that invite people to work with us. People who are not like ourselves, economically, 
politically and culturally. We need to work with people to understand how they come to know, to learn what and why they do what they do, and to bring their knowledge into the questions we ask and to demonstrate its value in the answers we co-develop. We need to conduct research with people, not about them, not on them, not even for them. Co-producing knowledge and generating shared understandings are pathways to more enduring and equitable solutions to many of our sustainability challenges. Working with requires more holistic research methods. Sir Ken Robinson rightly observed that academics work all in their heads. But research partners in sustainability encourage academic researchers like me to bring our whole selves to the research process, including our hands, our hearts, and sometimes even our spirits. This typically means using research designs that don't conform to the scientific method. They require more collaborative approaches that invite interpretation, reflection, critique, and reimagination with partners outside of academia. I find this super hard and super uncomfortable work. As a seasoned academic, I'm now confronted with being a novice, meeting an uncertain future at the same time as my students. And that's also unsettling. How and what then should my colleagues and I be teaching? I've come to conclude conclude that our programs need to spend less time on the science of environmental change and more time on the art of making change. How to do this? Academics like me need to work with our students to learn how to become team players, both within and beyond academia, to become effective and compassionate communicators to build respect, integrity, and trust in our work and in ourselves. And this requires us to spend more time listening to people, learning from their hopes, their fears, and their expertise. We also need to learn with our students how to become self-reflective and adaptive research practitioners, to critically question ourselves, our motivations, our approaches, and our learnings every step of the way, and to be willing to admit mistakes and then make change in our research practices in the midst of the work. That's a terrible thing to write into a grant application. But we need to learn how to become advocates for solutions that we co-produce. So advocacy is a four-letter word in academia. I know, A, D, V, it's actually eight letters, but that just makes it twice as bad. I'm not speaking about becoming activists outside of our expertise. Rather, we need to learn and teach how to leverage our expertise more effectively. The generic policy brief and the plain language report are wholly insufficient without a corresponding understanding of who does what in government, industry, communities, and even households, and really to use this understanding to improve the uptake of what we're learning. Many of the research skills graduates require today are new to academic researchers and don't readily produce the outputs that we traditionally value, such as high impact publications, invited presentations, and most importantly, peer recognition. But not surprisingly, we teach what we know. So in academia, we continue to teach content knowledge related to environmental science. We assume that graduates need to become research experts and that the knowledge they've gained through the scientific method is superior to other ways of understanding and addressing sustainability challenges. But once students leave our programs, very few will become academics. They'll become the practitioners, the citizens, the voters, um, and the decision makers who'll be confronting sustainability challenges of a scale and scope we haven't even imagined. They'll be required to collaborate to make change by applying a much different skill set than what our programs currently provide them. And that clock keeps ticking. In short, to empower the next generation of sustainability change makers, universities must equip graduates with effective people skills so they can navigate change and chart pathways for a sustainable and equitable future. 
This means that student and seasoned researchers alike must become co-learners, reflective practitioners, and advocates for change, not just beyond, but also within the academy. Academics can't expect, expect others to change the world unless we start to change ourselves and our own metrics of success. So the same week that the student discussed with me their dilemma, I was asked by the university if I would initiate an international research training partnership on a topic of my choice. I realized this student had given me a key insight. It's time to change what and how we teach at universities to empower graduates so they can sustain people and the planet. This was my opportunity to make change. I'm now working with a team of researchers and practitioners in the global north and south to enhance the professional, relational, and intercultural skills of present and future sustainability scientists and practitioners. Our program, Transex, is geared to modeling new research practices that engage partners from government, communities, industries, and households. We learn together with each other through structured processes for co-producing knowledge and providing communication skills for participants to become better advocates beyond and within the academy. In time, I hope the skills we'll learn will become embedded in our graduate programs and our efforts won't just change the lives of individuals, but will also make change in our academic institutions. Will this make me a good academic ancestor? I don't know. I won't be around to tell. But I can tell you that I intend to continue to work with students to change the perceptions of what makes for good research and practice, and ultimately to empower us all to push back the clock towards a more sustainable future. Thank you.